Start rotating, Piston Heads, because today we're diving deep into the revving journey of how Nissan revolutionized the world of supercars and had to be nerfed because of it. Let's start from the beginning, from the iconic R30 to the cutting-edge R35. Each generation of the GTR has left an indelible mark on automotive history. Please stay tuned, ha pun, and join us as we uncover the thrilling evolution that turned Nissan's dream into a global supercar phenomenon. The journey began with the R30. Well, not really. It actually begins 30 years prior, but I don't think you would mind since back then they weren't even called a Nissan since the first generation quote-unquote Skyline was produced by Prince Motor Company, who later merged with Nissan 15 years after the Gen 1. But back to the sixth Gen Skyline, which I will be interpreting as 30 reels, this is the car that defied expectations and ignited a passion for performance in the land of the rising sun, and brought a cult of car enthusiasts today, debating whether a 2JZ GTE was better than the RB26 Diet. Well, I don't want to be the wood in that fire, but if you want a comparison, please do like and subscribe. Well, the DR30 did win some, but that's all in the past. In comes the R31 Skyline, featuring the first RB engine series, the RB30DE RB the codename, 30 meaning the 3 liter or 3,000 cubic centimeters of combustible space, D meaning dual overhead camshaft, and E for electronic fuel injection. With each new generation, Nissan pushed what a country on the Far East could concoct from the factory, introducing groundbreaking technologies, aerodynamics, and jaw-dropping horsepower figures. The R31 introduced the world to the unbeatable combination of all-wheel drive and the perfect blend of weight and aero. Setting new standards for grip and acceleration, it became the Japanese touring car champions in 1989. After a few years, the competition were outpacing the R31 or the GTSR in every aspect. So the creators went back to the drawing board, and what welded from Naganori Ito's and Kozo Watanabe's banes was the successor to the 7th Sukai Rain. A car with controlled rear-wheel tow, low-speed maneuverability, and high-speed stability. And last but not least, an engine capacity increase from 2.4 liters to 2.6 liters, since it was what most would call beefy. With all these features in 1989, the R32 set out to beat Porsche's Nürburgring production car record by more than 20 seconds exactly. 8, 22.38 minutes. Well, for the 21st century. This lap is not as impressive since this record was 27 years ago, and back then it was blisteringly fast. We all know what came out of the factory a monster from Japan, said the Aussies getting hammered two years in a row and won 29 races in the JTCC, Japanese Touring Car Championship. What Naganori and Kozo produced shunned all cars at the time and even shunned on its successor. The R33 often overlooked, though refined, the formula, and whilst enhancing handling and aerodynamics wasn't the same as Godzilla, its predecessor. Its lines were curves, its original box was now a sphere. Honestly, it was a good thing the RB26 wasn't in the car because all I did was win some, but not in 32 reels passion or style. So the people at Nissan went to the drawing board as always and buried something up. The Nissan GTR R34 M Spec Nur, a true icon of its era, captivated enthusiasts halfway across the globe with its timeless design and raw driving experience, and it can even be called a marketing scheme. Asterisk cough. Asterisk fast and furious asterisk supercar stardom. In simple terms, it was a set part that mental about this car. It did 738.50s of not only Japanese, but foreigners as well. So, Pistons Heads. How did you find the little movie well as we embark on a thrilling ride through time, uncovering the innovations, the passion, and the relentless pursuit of excellence that defined the Nissan GTR? Please stay tuned for a journey you won't want to miss. Bricks and Velocity, unraveling automotive legends one story at a time.